This is part three of a three-part series with John White and Jason Himmelstein, showing you how to create SQL Azure databases, then using the new Microsoft Flow, and finally using Power BI to do visualization on Twitter analytics. <laughs> hey, John. How you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. This has been a fun night so far of recording with you. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's the first time for everything, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> so, um, I think it's important for us to take just a minute and explain why in the world are two SharePoint guys and BI guys pumping data into SQL Azure databases. Uh, and that came out of a comment that you made when, uh, so earlier today, I uh, rang you up and said, uh, hey, crazy Canadian, you want to see something cool that I built? Uh, and, and, and it was cool. It was pretty cool. It was not nearly as cool as what you're seeing on screen right now. It was much simpler than that. Um, because uh, this is the, the conglomeration of the, our two minds working together on something, um, which is far cooler than the simple-minded stuff that I put together. Uh, but, you know, so here you see that uh, this has been running since yesterday midday, and I have, uh, these are just tweets about SharePoint. I decided I wanted to, really wanted to play with Flow, and I wanted to be able to pump it in here. Um, so all this is is a very simple, uh, you know, pulled in some information, uh, very, you know, into a SharePoint list, using Flow and, uh, you know, did some visualization against it. And what you're seeing, uh, we'll, we'll talk about these things here in a few minutes, uh, but it, it's important to note that uh, the, this is starting to get kind of large. You know, that's yeah, that's 1,500 yeah. rows in a very short period of time. So let's do a quick refresh. It's been a while since I've refreshed. And go ahead, John. With, with, with my math, yeah, you, 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 in about two more days, you're going to stop being able to use the SharePoint list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, from from a, a, a size perspective, this was uh, at uh, about two meg earlier, uh, two and a quarter meg. So let's see how big this is after uh, as we refresh. We were showing this off to another one of our, our friends uh, earlier. So we're uh, growing and growing and growing. Well, we're past where we were before. Yep, significantly. Because we know that SharePoint loves to store lots of individual items, right? Yeah, I'm telling you. So let's see what it looks like now. Uh, we were at 1,558 tweets. and uh, I think it's see. still refreshing. It's still refreshing. Oh, no, 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 that was still, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So give it a second, and we will see the actual number show up. There we go. There you go, 1,583 tweets. Uh, yeah. so in just a, just a short period of time, we're seeing those tick up. Now, granted, folks, this is Sunday night, not during the business week. Uh, so that's why we're seeing such a low traffic. Uh, in central time, it's, uh, it's about 10.30 p.m., so not much Twitter traffic happening around SharePoint. Uh, but, you know, th that is uh, individual tweets, um, not retweets. That's uh, 1,168 uh, tweets. So we have a couple of fun things that we can do with this data, um, and we can actually drill into the data. I can come up here to drill, and I can see records uh, behind it, and I can drill down and in. It's taking a minute. Give it a chance to refresh. There we go. So I can actually go drill into uh, the Twitter stream data behind it. Um, but one of the other reasons, John, that uh, – we wanted to put this in SQL Azure is because uh, formatting. Uh, earlier today, when I rang you up, uh, I'm going to go into my edit queries here. Um, I hadn't actually done any of this editing. Uh, you can see now there is a lot of editing that has happened in the background. Um, my camera is not happy. Um, and uh, let's take a look at what the actual source data looked like originally. Wow, that's kind of ugly. Yeah, you gotta uh -oh. you gotta love uh, reporting against quids. Yes. So uh, after a while, I, I cleaned some of this up. I removed some columns and got it down uh, to a simpler form of this data. As soon as it moves forward, it's got to process everything as I make each step. Uh, but when I get to change type, come on. There we go. Uh, as you take a look, you see all of this, because I'm pulling it out of a SharePoint list, it was pulling it in with uh, div class external and all of this junk that was just ugly that I had to, had to parse and clean up and had to go through and find out what is uh, uh, ampersand uh, pound 58 semicolon. So we played with it a little, a little bit and we figured out, well, that's a colon. So we did some uh, some replace text and replace values in here, and you'll see all of that. Uh, and we actually got something much cleaner by the end of it all. Uh, so we actually cleaned all of that up. 
and you know now I have nice clean data. But again, that gets ugly after a while. Um, and then we did some custom visualizations. So now that we've been talking for a little while and we've uh, done some other fun stuff, let's take a look at where we are on our database because we actually have things that pumped in. Uh, future of SharePoint, SharePoint, and Office 365 is the search terms. Let's see where we are. Well, we've got 16 items in the list, uh, some fun uh, Chinese characters there as well. But uh, we should be able to play with, uh, play with this data just a little bit to start with and show folks what we can do uh, with this data. But uh, for, for grins, so that people know it, uh, let's drop down. Oh, there's my, me and my son. <laughs> Here is uh, Superman did Superman. Hey, uh, you know I got the I got the Superman digs on tonight too. So you know, uh, anytime <laughs> I'm home, I am I am Superman. Uh, at least inside of my four walls, my son think <laughs> it. At the very least, my wife uh, laughs at me, but that's okay. Um, so this is John's dashboard data, and uh, you know John, being the uh, the data geek that he is, had to go testing limits earlier today, um, and has, is now getting throttled by Twitter. Um, so we decided. Oh. You, know. you got to know where the where where the, where the line is, right? <laughs> Absolutely, but we wanted to get this out there tonight. Uh, so uh, in, in order to do that, we went ahead and uh, are switching over to my tenant. Um, so John, you know, as I click into these things, I get to go take a look at some really cool data and how it's visualized in the past 24 hours and everything. And this is a report I want in my tenant. You know, mm -hmm. I want to be able to go play with this because this is really cool. So uh, <laughs> you know, you 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 kind of gave me a way to do that. Yeah, uh, well, there's, there's a couple things I am going to uh, th throw in as well. One of the other reasons of going to a SQL Azure is that we can use what's called direct query when we build a, uh, a Power BI report. And direct query essentially allows us to interrogate the data in place in real time. So there's no none of that uh, refreshing having to happen. You don't have to schedule a refresh of the data model in behind the scenes. It's not for everyone, and you pay a, a pretty significant price from a, uh, from a feature standpoint, what you can do uh, with Power Query what you can do with the data model, but uh, this data kind of supports it. So we wanted to go ahead and do this so that whenever you open up the report, you get you get current data. So yeah, I, I, I wanted to get this uh, this Power BI desktop file, and that's the design um, that's the design file for Power BI, the the Power BI desktop product. It produces a PBIX file generally, but I don't want to send all of the data or, and uh, all the connection stuff that's in it uh, over the wire. I just wanted to send the, basically the schema, what the, all of the all of the work that's gone into doing these reports to Jason. So what I do, what I can do now, as of I guess it's the April update last week, it came out last Wednesday. I can uh, go into Power BI and save as template, and that creates a PBIT file. I then sent that to Jason, and Jason can then suck that into his environment, connect it to his Azure SQL, and we're off to the races. So I'm going to open that file now um, off screen at the moment, and it's going to open up here on the screen for us. So you guys get to look at my awesome, cute kid. He's much older <laughs> than that now, and uh, he's still pretty cute. But, uh, you know, that was back, oh, golly, that was probably his fourth birthday party, fifth birthday party. Um, <laughs> And that's his, his younger brother in front being a ham. So I had a lot more hair back then, John. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. Uh, it, it's going away. So while we're vamping as it's initializing the model, there are going to be a couple things that we're going to have to do uh, because John gave me this file, but I have my own database, and John has his, which is much more populated, as you could tell. Um, and he has a couple of other fields in there as well. Uh, so it's going to go off and try and uh, do a refresh against the database, and it's going to uh, come back and say, uh, no, you don't have access to that. So um, we've obfuscated the uh, database name here from you. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on close this. As soon as it's finished uh, updating, you'll see none of the visuals are working. Um, so I'm going to close this out. And the way that I'm going to get to this, I'm going to say close on these guys. Uh, John, walk me through. How do how do I get to that? So it it handles uh, it handles prompting you for additional set of credentials. But in this case, we're actually moving to a different SQL Server altogether. So we're going to have to drill into the the source query. Uh, the, and the way you do that is go into the Power Query behind this edit the edit query button. And when we go in here, we should be able to. We're going to see what we've done in Power Query, and you can see we've done almost nothing. All I've done is rename the columns because 
if you do much more than that, you're not going to be able to use the direct query mode that I was talking about before. But all we need to really do is change the source. And with any, as, as with anything else in Power Query, you can modify the steps a lot that, that happened before. So you go and click on that gear, and we should get a dialog box up, and boom, we can just change the, uh, the, the uh, server right here. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go grab my server name off of my connection string from a different window. And that way I can pop it in. And I have a different uh, database. I'm actually going to call it Twitter because that's my database. Uh, and check my advanced options. Make sure there's nothing here that I need to go modify as well. I'm going to say OK because now I'm replacing the step that John had done. And I'm actually going to go ahead and use an alternate credential in this situation because I'm not logged into uh, it using uh, Azure AD. And I'm going to pump in my password here as well. And I'm going to say connect. And the user is not authorized. That's always fun. Oh, yeah. Well, you, know, you have to use the right password there, dude. Oh, you know, you, you, oh, it's because if I come over here, I can do it at the database level, which is probably the right place. <laughs> I should have caught that. Do. Yeah, yeah. You failed me, John. You failed me. Uh, yeah, it won't be the last time. <laughs> there we go so now i have it and i'm pulling everything in and uh the step in the query is not supported in direct query mode okay that's fine uh and i could take a look and here is my data this is actually pulling out of my database now uh and uh you know do the rename of columns and you know john's columns are the same as mine so that works perfectly and now i'm going to close and apply this and this should make it so that my visuals work that's reconnecting reconnecting air loading here we go I have patience i have patience i have patience uh hey what do you know how about i love that? it when a plan comes together so a couple of things worth noting here um so we could take a look at uh, side by side with john's john had five search terms he has tigraph which is their amazing product from limited viz Dot com if you go out there and take a look uh, they are now showing up in the April update for uh, Power BI desktop yes, awesome stuff so if you uh, want to go take a look at that uh, and John actually had uh, Power BI in his model as well I don't so uh, you know because I'm a bad person and I haven't gotten that far yet <laughs> um, but here we go so future of SharePoint I have three tweets and I can go click through and I can take a look at my Office 365 one and again I don't have uh, the time duration and everything else set yet um, I haven't added all of that in, uh, but here you can see the Office 365 tweets coming through and the SharePoint tweets coming through as well. Now, there are more tweets than what were there when we took a look at the uh, database just a little bit ago. There were only 16. If I go execute this, I will see there's a lot more tweets now. It's pulling directly out of the database even faster than I, uh, I can think about it. So lots of really cool stuff. And uh, I now have the same dashboard that John had. Excuse me, I have the same report that John had. I don't have the dashboard that John had, though. So what I want to do now is I can actually go create a dashboard similar to what John had. Um, well, first of all, I need to publish this out to Power That's BI right. in order to make that work. Um, and one of the things I want to do now is I actually want to save this off myself as a Power BI, uh, uh, as a PBIX file, because I had uh, John's file. I'm going to move this over here. Um, Which was a template. Yeah, you know, which was a template. I'm going to save this off in my full in the my folder here, and I'm going to call this, uh, you know, Jason's. So now I can go ahead and publish this off to Power BI. I'm going to save it. It's not to Punky Brewster's fan club. I'm going to save it off to my workspace. <laughs> oh, I'm going to open. Publishing succeeded, but Power BI needs credentials for the data so, source. I need to go off there, and we're going to do that in a minute. And I'll talk about the other it, thing here in a minute. It, it, it's worth explaining what's going on there. There is no data in behind this directly, like like, like many things in Power BI. Uh, so it needs to connect to the back end to be able to show anything within the service. So it's basically telling you, until you go and put your credentials in the service, it's not sending the credentials. The, the credentials aren't stored within the file. The credentials are stored on the client, and then when you put that design in the in the service that needs to be stored in the service stored securely in the service and that's what you, that's what you need to do now all right so we're going to go in here and we're going to have to rename that because that's pretty terrible as a uh, as a report name jason pick so <laughs> lovely yes 
So here we go. We're going to fail again. Silly, silly, yeah. silly fail. And, John, where do we want to go? Uh, you want to go into the data sources. So if you uh, pick your little wheel icon on the upper right there, that it guy, or, or you just click on me. the button. Yeah, I, I was a little confused there why it didn't. So it was just a little lagging a little bit. Right, so uh, I yep. need to edit my ahead, credentials Ed. here. That's right. That's right. And uh, I'm going to use basic. I'm going to store this in here. And sign in. Pretty straightforward. Now it's saved in. And now I can go back into Power BI here. And I should see a report called Jason's. And I definitely want to rename that sucker because that's going to bother me. And we're going to call this uh, Future of SharePoint. So there we go. And now I can come click into it. And now it should automatically process and be able to show it to me. And ta-da, how about that? That's an awesome thing. All right, so we, we've d had to do a little bit of trimming. I ended up with a Firefox problem. So we're, uh, we're back, and uh, we've got our report created. Uh, we've got our report here. I want to pin to a dashboard, um, and my dashboard is called Future of SharePoint. So I can come in here and simply pin SharePoint in here uh, to an existing dashboard. I could have created a new, but I already have it here, so I'm going to create that there. I'm going to come back in and go to my Future of SharePoint dashboard. One of the things I want to do is I want to rename this particular one because I'm going to have a couple of different guys that look like this. And this is going to be called SharePoint Tweet Count. Very important, this step. And I'm going to say that's fine. I'm going to come back to Future of SharePoint as the report. And this one's going to take an extra second because this is pulling the, li the data live out of my SQL Azure database. That's right. I'm going to click over to Office 365. And there's my tweet count of 11. And I'm going to go pin this to visual in as well on the same dashboard. Come back to future of SharePoint. And I'm going to edit the name here and call this Office uh, 365 tweet count. Say apply. And then lastly, I just want to pull in future of SharePoint as a uh, string as well for search terms. And I only have three of those so far. I'm going to pin that to an existing dashboard. How much you want to bet that number increases on Wednesday? I'm willing to bet it does. So, and you and I will be together on Wednesday, so it's we will. a lot of fun. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to drink go drink some good whiskey. Oh, you know uh, and it. this is going to be future of SharePoint tweet count. So let's go ahead and say apply there. And the reason to do this is because now from this dashboard, I can I can share the dashboard and I can actually go and drill in to each uh, one of these and it'll take me back. So if I click on future of SharePoint, it's going to take me back here and it's going to position that correctly. Right, John? Absolutely right, sir. And it didn't, though. Look at that. It's uh, It's not positioning it back to the right search term. Oh, oh, I, I, I missed what you're saying. Actually, no, it doesn't. It, it'll, it'll just uh, go back to the. I think it's, the, it's either the default or the one you last had selected. So I think it's actually the default. I think it's the default. Uh, however, however, it, however it was saved. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You would think, but hey, can't yeah. have everything. Where would you put it? <laughs> Absolutely. So the other thing that I can go ahead and uh, pin is I, w I can pin recent tweets um, out there uh, to that visual. Uh, pin, pin that to that dashboard as well. Um, and pin to an existing dashboard. Um, come back out here, take a look, see my future of SharePoint, and I can actually reposition this down here. Uh, I, I, I'm just going to bring up something. You can actually change the visual before you pin it and not save it off, and it'll stay pinned. And here's an example. Uh, in, in that particular case, we want we want to have uh, all of the tweets show up. We don't want to just have the uh, the the tweets for the. Um, the one, whatever we had selected is what it would have been pinned. What we want to do is go back to the report. We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to put the report into edit mode. You want to throw, go ahead and do that, Jace? Absolutely. Throw the report into edit mode. Now, we normally wouldn't want to edit in the browser because we're using Power BI Desktop, and every submit is going to wipe out the changes. But these are temporary anyway. So one of the things we're going to do first off is we're going to add the column for the search term so we can see what the, what the tweet in, uh, in question is for this chart. This 
report is assuming it's being sliced, but the dashboard isn't. So you want to just add the search term. Uh, just go and so uh, I want to so remove this. Don't I have the Twitter ID? Yeah, you don't need the tweet ID. Yet. So uh, I just. That's a that's a filter. You want to go up uh, to the oh, values. You're right. There. Sorry, yeah, there it is. Haha. -ha. Yeah. See? And just yeah. stick in stick in the search term there. Let's see search term. Yeah, right that here. guy right there. Yeah. Come in there. And that that by the way controls the order of the column. So where do you want it to uh, show up? Probably be just before the text is what I would think. So you can just yeah drag and drop there we go perfect and then the other thing we need to do before we pin the visual because it's the it's the the visual state that is sticky is we want to go up and uh, to our slicer our search term slicer you want to select that jace and then we want to change its properties right now it can only select one item we're going to go tell it to be able to select all um so we do that and then we just go over to the properties of the, of the uh, slicer on uh, the, the little pen yeah that guy right there and we go to selection controls. Selection controls. Yep. And we select, turn on select all and turn off select single. Boom. And then we just hit the select all button and bang. Now, um, we should, yeah, that, that's right. And now uh, our, our tw all of our tweets are showing up. Now we, we can go ahead and pin that. And pin it. Yep. Go ahead and pin that. And, and now, now I'm going to go ahead and... Yep, just navigate over to the dashboard, and it's going to give you a warning that you haven't saved the report. No, you don't want to nah, save I it. I don't want to save that. That's right. So now that shows up with that state on the dashboard, but if we go back to the report, you'll see it's back to its previous state. So we don't have to persist the changes we're making to just be able to apply them to a dashboard. It's a nice trick. You can do that with any visual. Very cool. Now, John, do I have the ability on this to actually go and change the size of those columns? Because that was looking kind of funky there. We, no. you know, everything's there. <laughs> now we still don't have that ability, huh? That's that's correct. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. I haven't checked no. that for, for sure. But yeah, the, it's the move to the dashboard. The dashboard needs to be dynamically sized because the dashboard is central to things like the mobile experience. It has to be responsive. Yeah. So that's that's the first order of business uh, uh, for these visuals. So, um, but I can make it larger so I can see more uh, of this text showing up here. Um, and be able to play a little bit more and be able to see it here on the dashboard as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to make it so that I can see what I really want to see here. I'm going to move you up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to pull this up a little and pull you in. So it's still nice and responsive. It should pull me in. I'm going to keep it right to there. And now I can see the search terms and everything else as well. Yep. So... I now can go ahead and I can click through, and you know, anytime I click on any one of these, it's going to take me right back to my report, mm -hmm. um, and I can go to, ahead and take a look. Very cool stuff, John. Pretty Thanks slick. Sharing. Pretty slick. I like it. Alrighty. Well, with that, I think we have. Uh, I think we've demoed every everything we came here to show, didn't we? I think we have. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to uh, say good night. And uh, hopefully cool. this is useful for folks. Uh, if you liked it, please uh, join us. John and I, uh, we do a monthly web show uh, on IT Unity at uh, www.itunity.com forward slash bifocal, uh, talking about all the really cool stuff that Microsoft is doing around BI, SharePoint. We talk a little bit of SQL Server and all sorts of other fun stuff. So come out and join us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on May 4th uh, online. We'll be certainly looking for your tweets. So uh, be sure to uh, be tweeting and talking about what you think is really cool about the future of SharePoint. And uh, look forward to it. Thanks, John. Fantastic stuff. Keeps getting better and better. Yes, it does. All right. Thanks. Take it easy.